So much of what we do in physics involves at least one calculation using the kinematics equations, uh, simply because some of these uh, measurements of motion are, are tough to measure directly. It's much easier to make other measurements and then calculate some of these things. Like acceleration is really, uh, you know, it really requires some specialized tools to measure directly. Certainly easier to measure something like a couple velocities in a time and then uh, uh, calculate an acceleration. So we use these a lot, but where do they come from? Uh, well, the short answer, and don't get scared and click away now, the short answer is uh, calculus. But don't worry, it's easy calculus, or as easy as calculus can be. Uh, if you can find the area of a rectangle and a triangle, uh, you know enough calculus to be able to solve this. So let's take a look at the basis for the kinematics equations. First, we'll consider a graph of acceleration versus time. Now, in this level of physics, these graphs are going to be really boring. They're all going to be horizontal lines. We are limiting the situations we deal with uh, for the sake of making our math a little easier. If we had something other than a horizontal line here, our other relationships later on would get uh, much more complex. And so just to keep the math at, at the level that we can do it for, uh, you know, for high school students, um, or the you know, first couple years of college students, we don't include those situations right now. Uh, but certainly that's how, how the real world works. We have changing acceleration. But for us, horizontal lines on acceleration versus time graphs. Now you probably remember from your graphing uh, uh, experience here that on these graphs, we're either gonna be looking at the y value or the slope of the graph or the area underneath that graph. Uh, to get other values or to get, uh, to get meaningful information out of these. Um, let's consider the area underneath this graph. Now, I haven't given any, uh, any values. I've just assigned a, a value for acceleration of ax, just a variable for that. So let's look at the, uh, um, at the area from this moment in time here to this moment in time here. And so we'll have some area bounded by this rectangle. And the area on this is going to represent some other quantity. And so we need to think about what that quantity would be. Uh, I always advocate for thinking through units on this. Our acceleration units typically are going to be meters per second squared. Our time units are going to be seconds. So if we do some calculation of area, which will be a length times a width here, we'll do meters per second squared times seconds, and we're going to get just meters per second, no squared on that. Now that is a velocity measurement, and so that rem reminds me that, ah oh yes, the area under this curve is equal to the change in velocity. And in this case, the change in velocity is going to be equal to the length, which we'll call uh, delta t, the amount of time that passes, uh, and then multiplied by the height or the width of this rectangle, which we're calling ax. So we get delta v equals uh, time times acceleration, or acceleration times time. Now delta v is just the same as the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So I'm going to replace that here, v minus v naught. And we'll, we'll uh, distinguish uh, dimensions later on. For now, let's just say that we are dealing with uh, the x dimension in both of these. So vx and vx naught equals. And I'm just going to change the order on those two variables, acceleration times time. And then the other thing that we usually do for, uh, for how this, this equation is written is we uh, add that vx not to both sides. And so that gets us the equation vx equals vx not plus ax times, and then I have a delta t on the AP equation sheet. They just have t. It is the, the change in time on this graph, though. Um, so however you want to write that is probably OK. Now, this actually isn't necessary for us to, to go through that whole process. We can just look at the definition for acceleration. Acceleration, we defined as the change in velocity over the change in time, or the rate at which velocity changes. And since delta v, we said, is v minus v naught, divided by, and again, they use a t instead of a delta t, we can see that the definition of acceleration gets us back to this equation. That's our first of the kinematics equations.
Now let's consider a velocity versus time graph. Uh, I have this velocity shown as positive and increasing over time, but uh, the, this works on the general level as well. So it could be positive and decreasing, or negative and increasing, or negative and decreasing. Uh, what we do have to have, though, is velocity changing at a constant rate, which is the same as saying that we have constant acceleration, which is an assumption we've already made. So we're okay on that piece. Uh, let's look at the area under the curve on this one as well. And let's look at it from this moment in time to this moment in time. So I want this whole area here. I'm going to define a couple of values here. Let's say that the velocity that it starts at, we'll call that v x naught, and the velocity that it ends at, we'll call that vx, starting velocity and ending velocity. And then the span of time here is going to be, uh, again, it's, it's usually delta t, but on the equation sheets for the AP test, they just call that distance t. Now I need to think through the uh, meaning for the area on this graph. Um, and again, I think through units on this. So we have meters per second for our velocity, and we have seconds for our time. So if I do an area, that'll be a length times a width or a base times a height, maybe a, a coefficient in there um, for the triangle piece. But uh, anyway, we ha we'll have some number of meters per second times some number of seconds. Meters per second times second is going to give us just meters. And that reminds me, that, ah, yes, the area here represents the change in position. And so in this case, the area that I'm looking at is the area of a trapezoid. Now, if you don't remember the equation for the area of a trapezoid, no big deal. A trapezoid is just a triangle and a rectangle, or maybe a rectangle and a couple of triangles. Um, and so we can set it up that way. So the area on this thing, the delta x, is going to be equal to the area of that triangle plus the area of the rectangle. So the area of the triangle would be 1 half times base times height. So the, the height on this one is this little distance right here. And that's the difference between vx and vx naught. So that's vx minus vx naught. And then the other dimension right here, that's the t that we labeled down here. OK, plus the area of this little rectangle at the bottom, and that one is uh, vx naught high and t wide. All right, and so a little bit of algebra here. Um, we'll uh, distribute that 1 half and that t um, with the parentheses there. So we have 1 half vx t minus 1 half vx naught t plus vx naught t. The negative 1 half vx naught and the plus 1 vx naught t on both of those uh, can be combined. And so we get 1 half vx t plus 1 half vx naught t. And then typically we'll, um, we'll factor out 1 half and t from that. And so we'll get an equation that looks like this. Delta x equals 1 half vx plus vx naught times t or maybe change that delta x to an x minus x naught equals 1 half vx plus vx naught times t. Now, this equation is a kinematics equation as, uh, as I learned in many way, but I think there must be some sort of a government conspiracy because your AP equation sheet does not include this equation. And you can always get around it, so it's not a big deal that they don't include it. I don't know why they don't include it, but you know it's it's one of them anyway. We can derive it from the graphs, so we'll uh, we'll include that here. Now this equation might uh, uh, might make some logical sense to you as well. If we added these two velocities together and then divided by two or multiplied by one half, uh, that looks a lot like we're taking an average. And so the average of those two velocities, if we have constant acceleration anyway, is going to be the average velocity over this period of time. So if we multiply velocity by this uh, average velocity by this time, 
uh, over which we're traveling, we would expect to get some distance or how far we are from where we started. The displacement really is what that represents. So it makes some logical sense there as well. Now, let's continue on. We're going to put these two equations together in a couple of different ways. We've derived these two kinematics equations. The third one we'll, we'll have is just going to be a combination of these two. We're going to make a substitution to elim eliminate uh, the, uh, the, the final velocity from these equations, or from one, from one of these equations. So if we don't know what velocity we get to, um, we can still solve a problem. So I'm going to do this just by making a substitution of this expression in for velocity uh, final. So then this, uh, this second equation is going to become x minus x naught equals 1 half. And then instead of vx, I'll put vx naught plus ax times t. That's my substitution. And then I still have a plus vx naught in there and I multiply by t. So then I'll simplify a little bit, x minus x naught equals, um, in, on the inside of the parentheses I now have, so I've got one half on the outside, I've got two factors of vx naught, so two vx naught plus ax times t, and then on the outside we have a t. Uh, let's distribute the one half and the t, so we get x minus x naught equals, uh, let's see, we'll have 1 half times 2 vx naught, so that's just vx naught, and then we're multiplying by the t as well. So we have vx naught t plus, and then 1 half times the ax t, so that's 1 half ax t, times another factor of t, so we get 1 half ax t squared. And then typically uh, you'll see this equation written uh, where the x naught is added to both sides. So we get x equals x naught plus vx naught t plus one half ax times t squared. And this is our third kinematics equation. This one, if you're more familiar with calculus, you can, uh, you can get by um, integrating the acceleration function and then getting the velocity from there. And then from there you can integrate the velocity function. You have a few constants in there, so you have to figure out what the constants mean, but you can uh, approach it from that, that uh, method as well. All right, one more equation, still just combining those original two equations, but in a different way. So starting from the same point, we're gonna combine these, this time to eliminate t from our equation so that we can solve problems where we don't know and aren't asked for time. So I'm going to rearrange the equation on the left to isolate t. And then I'm going to uh, substitute this expression into this equation for t. And so I end up with the equation x minus x naught equals 1 half. Uh, inside the parentheses doesn't change, so vx plus vx naught. And then times vx minus vx naught, uh, x naught, there we go, divided by a. All right, and then we have a little bit of uh, algebra do, to do to simplify this. Um, so let's run through that. x minus x naught equals, I see that I have a, a 1 over 2, and this one is divided by a. I'm just going to combine those two and make this 1 over 2a at the front, just so I don't have to have uh, any other fractions. Uh, and then I've got vx plus vx naught and vx minus vx naught. And so I'll foil those out. You might recognize this one uh, already. So this is like an a, uh, a plus b times a minus b. So you might know the outcome of this one already. But even if not, we'll foil this. So first times first, that'll be vx times vx, or vx squared. Uh, outsides, vx times negative vx naught, so negative vx, vx naught. Uh, insides, vx naught times vx, that's a positive vx, vx naught. And last, that'll be a vx naught squared negative. Whew, running out of room there. Okay, so then x minus x naught, uh, and let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 2a. 
just to get rid of that fraction. Uh, and then in this, uh, in this equation, I see or, uh, the, the expression on the right side. I see I have a negative vx, vx naught, and a positive vx, vx naught. So let's cancel those two. Those add up to zero. And I'm left with vx squared minus vx naught squared. And then we'll add the vx naught squared to both sides. Your equation sheet for the AP test um, has the sides flipped as well. So they have vx squared equals vx naught squared plus 2a times x minus x naught. And with that, we get to the fourth of the kinematics equations. Although, like I said, on the uh, equation sheet, you only have three. So with a little bit of uh, attention to, uh, uh, to the graphing uh, and, and what the uh, area under the curve on a few different graphs means, we can derive these four different kinematics equations for ourselves. So you know, no magic involved there uh, and you know, some, some math that is actually pretty manageable. Now we get to the, the part where we have to apply these things, and oftentimes these will be uh, equations that we use as part of a larger problem. So we get plenty of practice with uh, uh, setting up problems like this, and we'll start that in the next video in this playlist.